When you think about the world's superpowers, you probably think of countries like the United States and China. And that's for a good reason, as these are currently the two largest and most important economies in the world. But that might not be for much longer. Because over the last five years, a handful of lesser known countries have quietly been working on some world changing projects in the background that could catapult them to being the top economic superpower of the world in the next few decades. During the 1700s, the two largest economies in the world were that of China and India. In fact, over half of the world economic output during that time came from these two countries. And this was largely because the world economy at the time was still largely based around agriculture and raw resources, which China and India were the dominant world players in. But then something changed. You see, as China and India continued to focus upon their wealthy agricultural economy, a small island country called Great Britain was innovating and trying to create new technologies that could help the country prosper, not just for the next few years, but for the next century to come. So for example, China and India were the largest cotton manufacturers in the world in the 1700s, but after Great Britain invented machine-powered textile factories, the productivity of one textile worker in Great Britain became 500 times greater than a worker in China or India. Essentially, this one innovation in Great Britain made a large portion of China and India's economy obsolete overnight. And Great Britain's innovation didn't stop there. They also invented the steam engine in the 1700s, which was revolutionary for increasing productivity, building an advanced military, and helping invent new advanced machines. Great Britain also invented many other things during this time, such as a significantly more efficient way to make metals, machine tools, large-scale chemical production, and yes, even very advanced agricultural tools. Essentially, Great Britain had used technological innovation to become the world's one true superpower by the 1800s. And because of their advances in technology during this time, Great Britain was pretty much able to do whatever they wanted on the world stage, as their military technology was so advanced that they ended up conquering many regions around the world on the way to becoming the largest empire in history. Now, the Industrial Revolution was the largest reason why Great Britain was able to build the largest empire the world had ever seen. But to the surprise of many, that was not the only Industrial Revolution that would knock off the world's top superpowers from their throne. You see, there have been multiple industrial revolutions. The first industrial revolution was known for producing steam power and small machine tools. But a second industrial revolution occurred between 1870 and 1914. And during this time, the United States began rapidly adopting new technologies, such as electricity, railroads, the telegraph, telephone, mass production of steel, petroleum, the combustion engine, and much more. And because the United States adopted these technologies first, they had an early surge in productivity and surpassed Great Britain as the world's top economic superpower. In fact, by 1900, the Western world had become so much more technologically advanced than the rest of the world that much smaller countries like Germany and France had reached the same economic levels as the superpowers from 100 years earlier, which were China and India. So the winner of the second industrial revolution was America, because they adopted to the newest technologies first. But soon after the second industrial revolution came the third industrial revolution. And this was the period in the 20th century where we saw the invention of computers, software, automobiles, nuclear technology, and electronics. And as you might have guessed, for the most part, the United States, Japan, and the Soviet Union were the three countries that adopted these new technologies the fastest and made them the global superpowers for much of the 20th century. And so that brings us to the moment we are living in today. Whether you know it or not, we are currently going through the fourth industrial revolution. And based on the previous history of the last several industrial revolutions, whatever country invents and adopts the newest and most powerful technologies first will likely be able to be a superpower of the world for the next 50 to 100 years. And that's why many countries around the world know the stakes are just as high for this industrial revolution as they were for the last ones. You see, one common 
common trend that we have seen through each one of these industrial revolutions is that whatever country adopts a technology that dramatically increases productivity first will end up becoming a superpower. So, what technology will be the most vital to economies around the world for the next 50 years? Well, almost every country around the world agrees that it is a technology that some people are embracing in their daily lives today, while others are becoming ever more fearful of it every day. In 1952, a computer scientist named Sandy Douglas built one of the first known computer games. In his game, which he called OXO, he programmed the game in a way where the computer had a loss rate of 0%. Meaning that if a human were to have played this game on the computer, which was essentially tic-tac-toe, the human player could never win, even if the human player played a perfect game. And this was arguably the first time in history where a computer was able to perform a multivariable game better than any human ever could. And this trend of computers getting better at games would continue for the next several decades. I mean, in 1988, computers became unbeatable in Kinect 4. By 1997, IBM's Deep Blue beat the world champion Garry Kasparov in a game of chess. And in 2016, Google's DeepMind beat world champion Go player Lee Sedol in a best of five series, a task that many thought was impossible for a computer to do at the time. Now, even though these were some of the most popular milestones in AI, that many of you have probably heard of, it is important to note that as the world focused on these large events of an AI playing against humans in games, there were even more important AIs being developed with larger, real-world impacts. And that is why the fourth industrial revolution is heavily tied to an event that is currently going on that is called the Artificial Intelligence Arms Race. You see, as most of the public focuses on the novelty of AI and its applications, governments and corporations around the world have quietly been gearing up for the next economic and militaristic battle for world domination through artificial intelligence. So let's start off with the current leaders in AI, who are the United States and China. In 2014, the United States' former Secretary of Defense said that artificial intelligence will define the next generation of warfare. And that is why the United States government has been investing roughly $8 billion per year into AI research and technology. And one of the biggest projects is a project called Sea Hunter, which is a fully functional American warship that is currently in its final stages of testing before becoming an official part of the US Navy. And the benefits of having an AI-run warship are pretty substantial in regards to the Navy's budget. That's because a typical warship that is full of crew members typically costs about $700,000 per day in order to maintain. But the Sea Hunter AI warship costs only $15,000 per day, making it 98% more efficient than a human warship. Now, the United States' biggest advantage probably isn't actually from government-run AI research, though. In my opinion, the biggest advantage is Silicon Valley. You see, even though the US government is investing billions of dollars per year into AI innovation, the US private sector is dramatically outpacing the entire US government in regards to AI innovation. I mean, when you just think about all of the AI milestones in history, most of them have come from US private companies or American universities. Whether it's Google, IBM, Amazon, MIT, Tesla, or SpaceX, private companies and universities might actually actually be the US's biggest advantage to maintaining its dominance as the world's biggest superpower. And we will come back to some of the economic implications of this in just a minute. But the next biggest contender in the AI arms race is China. Xi Jinping said in 2019 that AI technology is critical to the future of global military and economic power competition. That is why China has become a hotspot for AI investment over the last five years. In 2017, nearly half of the world's AI startup investments went to Chinese companies. The Chinese government also announced a $2 billion AI incubator, and Chinese companies have filed five times as many AI patents as American companies. Now, saying all of this, China may not even be the biggest threat to the United States' AI supremacy. The United Kingdom, for example, actually has the fastest growing AI sector in the world. Canada has a handful of world-leading AI companies like Blue Dot and Element AI. Singapore was rated the number one best country in regards to its AI implementation into its own economy. South Korea has the highest AI investment per capita 
Canada, of anywhere in the world. Japan has several top AI robotics companies in the world. Russia will soon have 30% of its military be run by AI-enabled robotics. And Germany and France are producing more computer science, math, and engineering graduates per capita than anywhere else in the world. All this means is that many major countries around the world have realized the importance of AI and automation in regards to the future global economy and military. Now, as you can imagine, we all know the militaristic implications of AI and how the country with the best AI and robotics will likely have the best future military. Whether it's an AI-run Navy, Air Force, or Infantry, there will likely be a scenario in the next 30 years that at least one military power will have a large portion of their military be run by AI. And if that were to be the case, they could theoretically dwarf the military capabilities of any other country in the world. But in the immediate future, the biggest implications of the AI arms race will likely come from the economics of AI. You see, as every year passes, AI gets a little more sophisticated and more jobs get automated away. In fact, one study showed that from the year 2000 up until 2018, 1.7 million manufacturing jobs were lost due to AI and automation. And another study from McKinsey showed that up to 20 million more manufacturing jobs could be replaced by AI and automation by 2030. Now, from a corporate perspective, this kind of makes sense. The corporations and countries that adopt AI will have an increase in efficiency that has not been seen since the last industrial revolution. This is because machines are typically between 100% and 1000% more efficient than humans in the manufacturing space. You also don't have to pay machines a wage, and machines won't come with any other economic efficiencies, such as sick days, an eight hour workday, vacation time, or a five day work week. And what this all means for a country or corporation that adopts automation in the manufacturing sector first is two things. One of which is that they can make goods for much lesser cost than anywhere else in the world. I mean, one day in the next decade, there might be a near zero labor cost to manufacturing certain items with AI. And therefore, whoever makes the goods for the cheapest using AI instead of humans will have a significant competitive advantage and will likely be able to become the next manufacturing hub the world. But it's also worth mentioning that it also means that for that very same country, they will likely experience an increase to their unemployment rate as its manufacturing jobs get automated away. Now, for those that are curious, the countries that are adopting automation the quickest within the manufacturing sector are, in order, South Korea, Singapore, Germany, and Japan. And what's also interesting is that Japan, Germany, and South Korea are already third, fourth, and fifth respectively in regards to being the largest manufacturing countries in the world, and the only two countries that are bigger manufacturers in the world are China and the United States. So the fact that those three smaller countries are automating at a rate that is much higher than China and the United States might mean that they could potentially catch up to and surpass those countries as the top manufacturing nation in the world in the next decade or two. But this is also assuming that AI and automation keeps innovating at the same rate that it is today, and if it does, it'll give those smaller countries a bigger competitive advantage. So in a sense, right now, South Korea, Germany, and Japan are the countries that are the closest to adopting a 100% AI-run manufacturing sector, which means that one of them could become the front runner for becoming the manufacturing powerhouse of the world at some point in the 21st century. But the manufacturing sector might not be the hardest economic sector that gets hit in this race for AI supremacy. What do you think is the most common job in America? Is it a cashier? Maybe a farmer? How about a construction worker? Well, it is actually a driver. When you take into account the millions of truck drivers, rideshare drivers, and delivery drivers, driving is actually the most common job in the country. But since 2004, driving with artificial intelligence has come a long way. We are now at a point where AI is sophisticated enough, where a self-driving Tesla is on average nine times safer than a human driver under average weather conditions. All this means is that once regulations for autonomous driving are passed around the world, whatever country adopts full autonomous driving first will likely have the most efficient and safe transportation sector on the planet. And if a country were to have the most efficient transportation 
transportation sector on the planet, it would help drop the country's prices of virtually everything, like the transportation of oil, food, packages, and virtually anything else that relies upon trucks, trains, cars, or even ships. So when that happens, that country will likely have a major price and productivity advantage over every other country on the planet, therefore giving them a major advantage in the global economy. Now, these are just some of the dozens of immediate threats to the global economy. I mean, millions of retail jobs, cashiers, financial service jobs, and many other jobs have already begun being automated away in the last five years alone. So to this point, we have largely been talking about the current and near future of implications that AI will bring to the world going forward. But what will the far future look like in 25 to 50 years? Well, some say that there will be a lot of new jobs that will be available that haven't been invented yet. And I mean, we have seen that trend through the previous industrial revolutions. In fact, one study showed that one third of all current jobs in America were jobs that didn't even exist 30 years ago. I mean, think about it. In 1990, jobs like web developers, social media related jobs, app developers, and a ton of other technical and consultation jobs were not even invented yet. But today, many of them are amongst the top 100 common jobs in the world. Now, others say at the same time that the creation of new jobs might not happen this time around. Because some say that AI and robotics will become so sophisticated that it could surpass humans in virtually every non-physical occupation by 2050. Meaning that within 30 years, there might be more automated jobs in the world than human jobs. And that brings up a whole different debate about what should a future economy look like? Should governments allow for AI to take over the economy? Would a policy like universal basic income become a necessity? And what happens to to the few corporations that own the AI technology? Do a few dozen companies monopolize the entire world? Or more importantly, what happens if AI becomes better than humans at virtually everything? There are a lot of important questions that will come along as AI becomes more advanced and automation becomes more apparent into our lives. I mean, if you just think about how much AI runs your life today compared to 15 years ago, you will realize why countries around the world think it is so important to invest in this new technology. I mean, you walk around all day with a talking artificial intelligence in your pocket, everything you search for online is filtered based on an algorithm that a company like Google finds suitable to you. When you buy an item online, a lot of your search results, marketing, sales processes, and some of the delivery processes are actually being done by AI right now, you might be driving a car that has self-driving AI, you play games and use apps that are becoming smarter every single day, and there are a ton of other examples just like this that are signaling to countries and corporations that artificial intelligence will become a much bigger player in the daily lives of individuals in the years to come. But all in all, one thing remains true. Countries around the world are preparing to have their economies and militaries be run based around AI and automation. And whichever country develops the best AI that is either utilized economically or militaristically, then that country will likely become the world's new superpower and the winner of the fourth industrial revolution. Now, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please subscribe and hit that notification bell as I should have another video coming out in the next few days. Also, please check out my documentaries playlist as I have a ton of other videos just like this on there. And lastly, please leave a like as that would mean the world to me. So make sure to check out another video on my channel and I will see you guys there in just a few seconds.